There are concerns regarding neurological events after TAVR, including clinically silent brain infarction, it's seen on magnetic resonance scans, and these have been associated with neurocognitive functional changes, so will embolic protection make a difference? That is the question. And we are at TCT in Washington, D.C., as you can see, to discuss simultaneous publication appearing in Jack on embolic protection in TAVR, and I'm with Dr. Samir Kapadia, who is an MD and the director of the Sohn's Catheterization Laboratories at the Cleveland Clinic. So your Jack paper is based on a prospective randomized trial called Sentinel. Before we get there, talk about why Sentinel? Why is there a need for answering these questions about embolic protection? It's a very important question. So when we did the first trial, the partner trial, partner B trial, right. Dr. Sheff wrote an editorial in New England Journal of Medicine saying that the most important thing to resolve with TAVR is to prevent stroke. Because in surgery, they control all the debris, clean it up, so you will not have a stroke, but in tower, you will have a stroke. And this was the main concern in New England Journal of Medicine editorial that came out. Subsequently, interestingly enough, there are a lot of trials looking at stroke risk, and it turns out that the stroke risk with tower is actually not higher than surgery, very, very similar, or maybe even less than surgery. However, it is still about 2.5% clinical stroke risk. And if you look at the MRI of the patient, 60 to 80% of people have emboli. You get those after silent infarcts. Silent infarctions. And there is data to say that a silent infarction in other situations, not related to tower, long term causes morbidity and it also leads to uh, significant neurocognitive defects. So this is the reason, this is the first time that we were going to study the neurocognition and silent infarction. We have never had a very good perspective data on neurocognition and silent infarction. And so now you've got like 363 patients, was it? And they're studied, and so how did you conduct the Sentinel trial, and who were these patients, describe them? So these are the patients who are undergoing commercial tower, meaning in United States, the tower is approved for high-risk patients. So patients who are going to undergo tower were randomized in three arms, one arm, to have sentinel device with neuroprotection, one arm control, where we will not use sentinel device, and third arm, we will use sentinel device, but we will not do MRI and neurocognition just for safety analysis, okay. that if they have clinical stroke or not. Right. So about one to two, so two patients sentinel, one patient control. And nearly all were here in the United States, I think they were. There are uh, two sites in, two Germany, in Germany, very important site in Germany. So, uh, Axel Linke, Dr. Linke is a co-principal investigator from Germany, Sushil Kodali with me. Right. So three of us uh, did the tri trial, uh, the Sentinel trial. Okay, so what did you find? It's a, first of all, very important trial. Uh, we found several things. One is that the MACE rate, meaning that major cardiovascular event rate, was, not, although statistically not different, was less and 42% reduction compared to the control and much less than pre-specified uh, criteria that we used to say that this would be the safe device or not. This, the clinical stroke rate was also 5.6 versus 9.1% in the test versus control. Statistically not different, but again, this was not, the, uh, this was not power to show statistical difference in clinical right. endpoints. The primary endpoint was to say how many new emboli, uh, the volume of the new strokes that happen in the brain. And the volume of the new lesions that appeared on the MRI after doing tower was less, 42% reduction. Again, statistically, however, not significant. When we adjust, we, this is the first time ever we did the trial. So we never knew what to expect from the trial. When we adjust for the baseline flare volume, baseline flare volume is to say that how many strokes existed in the people before we did the tower. Right. So if we take the patients who are at high risk of this emboli, once we adjust this baseline volume, adjust for the different types of devices that we used, we found that there was a, a difference, statistical difference between the sentinel device versus the control arm. More importantly than anything else, 99% of the patients, we found material inside of the filters. So with all the evidences to say that we found material in the filter, we found less, uh, less uh, 
new lesions in the brain. Right. And we also found that people who had more lesions had worse neurocognition. So there was a trend, a, a, a correlation between the neurocognition and number of lesions in the brain. So with all of those evidences taken collectively, it looks like that there is uh, definitely a role of some kind of neuroprotection in the tower population. Now, you missed clinical significance on exactly. your primary endpoint. Why? I mean, this has been an issue with, with embolic protection for a long time. You see the debris, it makes perfect sense that it, it's going to make a difference, and then the numbers you end up with is, are very similar to yours. Right. What's the, the issue here? I think the most important issue is that uh, we do not have, this is one of the first kind trial, so all our assumptions that we made, uh, we did not have very good scientific uh, ground to stand on. Second is that the devices are changing. So we got, we, we based all our analysis based on one valve. Right. Now the valve is different. It is easier <laughs> to track. So the emboli that we found in this newer valves were much less uh, compared to the valves that we designed the trial for. However, the, the differences were consistent. The di so we are now going to do analysis because very similarly conducted three trials, randomized trials with the central device. So we will combine all the data, patient level data, and try to see it was just because of the power that we missed the primary endpoint or there is something else. So if it is related to the power, then uh, we will know because we already have the patients uh, that we have tested this device with the same kind of neurological examination, core lab analysis, uh, blinded uh, analysis to look at the uh, the new lesion volume. So you showed feasibility, obviously, and safety. Feasibility safety is outstanding. So the success rate of the device was outstanding, and there was no concern uh, for the safety, which is a big deal, oh, yeah. because we are manipulating devices in the carotid artery, so it is a big deal. So how difficult is it to do this procedure, to use this device? Average time, uh, again, is hard to calculate the average time, but it is less than 10 minutes. Okay. additional time. It goes through the radial artery, so it does not require a big access. It is going six French sheath, going through the radial artery. And the contrast use and the fluoro time use, very minimal. So it is really not adding that much to the complexity of the procedure. So overall, relatively easy to do. To be honest with you, uh, we have asked for compassionate use in several patients, because when we see that there is mobile things on the aortic valve, we Get feel- nervous. We get very nervous and we have asked FDA and they have provided us right. with compassionate use because these are filters, they're effective and they're safe to, safe to put in the patient. So it makes at least intuitive sense uh, that if you see something right. that is flickering on the aortic valve that we should at least have some kind of a protection. So Dr. Capadio, what's next? So first of all, we have to analyze that this is a power, po power problem or this is really uh, a difference that we cannot demonstrate effectiveness of this particular device. And we will address that by combining the data. There are other trials looking at different other types of emboli protection. So they also show similar data. Then we, have, we will have more convincing evidence that something needs to be done. Now, which patients will require the emboli protection? Yes, exactly. Are we going to use it in all patients? Are we going to use it specific valves? Are we going to use it in the patients who are somehow we identify them at a high risk. So these questions remain unanswered. Uh, my opinion, if somehow we can identify patients at a higher risk, uh, we will most certainly use it. But since we do not know who is at high risk, it is very possible that it will be a patient and physician preference if the device is safe to use it uh, whenever they think uh, is economically and otherwise feasible, if the devices are available. So in this paper in Jack, you talk about the important lessons to learn from this trial. What are those? Device is safe. Emboli are available. Uh, emboli happen during tower, and we can catch in 99% of patients. And the neurocognitive function is directly proportionate to even silent infarcts. So these silent infarcts cannot be ignored because this is the first time that we have that kind of data. So these are the most important points. And the device 
had some interaction with the type of valves that we used that we did not anticipate. Right. So this was something that we learned during the trial. Well, we are at TCT and we have been discussing a simultaneous publication at Jack and it is Sentinel, Cerebral Embolic Protection During Transcatheter Aortic Valve Replacement. Check it out online because it is now, as of TCT, once the embargo is off, it is available for you at Jack. For Cardiosource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.